So, let's see. Let's uh, guard this. You can guard from either side. However, again, for aesthetic reasons, I like to mess with important pages such as frontispieces, um, title pages, etc. I like to mess with them as little as possible. You don't have to put the guard uh, tissue on this side. You could do it on this side, so let's do just that. Very straightforward. Line everything up, again, using as your limits the printed area. Charge your brush. We'll be using thicker, the thicker tissue, as pointed out earlier, but everything else is exactly the same. And doing only half at a time, it's much quicker, obviously. And we're done. Very little distortion will happen when it's this fast. Ready for the heat. Yes, you're right. I could have turned it over, but I'm confident there was no surface, no exposed uh, adhesive uh, to mess up the iron, etc. Just get rid of moisture from the other side. And we're in business. Are the dimensions, because of the introduction of moisture and the cockling, the, the uh, let's call it the uh, geometric distortion, is it an issue? Well, this point from top to bottom has changed now. It shrunk because of the moisture, but very marginally. When this is put back together with everything else, it's going to be so marginal, uh, the average cursory glance is not going to uh, show anything, any irregularity. So we're ready to go. Now, while we have it, let's just pre-fold just to make our next job a little easier. Now this goes to this. Here at this point you want to just take your time, double check everything. Title page, verso title page, contents, everything opens flat. Make sure that. Uh, verso of contents and uh, introduction, or uh, what do you call it? Um, dedication, and then the book itself. So, that looks straightforward. I don't think we're missing anything. Now, before we're done with this first signature, what will become the first signature, we're about to join the first and second, technically speaking, uh, into one. Uh, before we're done with this, we're going to uh, also add at least, well, we'll add the frontispiece and I believe one more blank sheet. Uh, before the uh, front fly. So it's going to be a substantial piece of work, but one, it will then be one unit, a single fold, the needle and thread go through everything all at once, maximizing strength, etc. Now, I already pre-folded this, but I'm not going to trust this. I'm going to instead, for aesthetic reasons, I'm going to rely on the foredge. Align that up to your satisfaction, top and bottom also. Turn it over, keep it stable, press it down, and then make the final fold. Now, assuming nothing gets jarred in the process, we can then paste, guesstimate how much, which should be 
fine. And paste. I should have a piece of scrap under this, but I'm so good, I don't really need it. Mere mortals trying that would need to be safe. Now, again, holding everything in situ, everything juxtaposed exactly where you want it. The fore edge is going to be even, the top and bottom are even. Got everything down pat. And apply heat and pressure. The pressure I'm applying is marginal. You don't need a lot of pressure, just it doesn't take much to flatten this stuff out. And I'm working on a nice smooth uh, flat surface. And you're done. Now you see a natural bow, that's all part, and you can see uh, ripple effect. That's all because of the shrinkage due to the uh, introduction of moisture into the paper fiber. As fast as we were, as efficient as we were, you still get distortion. Just try to minimize the distortion. That's the best you can do. Structurally, this is now very stable. That's at least as strong as, well, probably close to being original strength. And everything opens flat, yes. So, we're almost done. Just two more sheets. I don't think I'll bother showing the last signature. Essentially the same structure. Maybe not quite as complicated. Uh, so, we'll do these last two sheets um, guarded onto the first signature. We will then reintroduce the inside pages of the signature and uh, be ready to go on to the next one. After I do this, we will take a break, come back, everything will be done, and we'll be ready to sew. First thing, as I said earlier, first thing we'll do is show how to uh, punch new holes in exact alignment in all the signatures, and then we'll proceed with the sewing again. Make sure all your residue is cleaned off. For aesthetic reasons, you could apply the uh, restoration paper on this side or the other. For aesthetic reasons, I like to use the less important side. Scrap paper, scrap paper going to go in. Because of the cleaning of the uh, old adhesive, this paper has been compromised a bit. You can see the rough edges. It's not quite as thick as the rest of the paper, so we will go in just far enough to make sure we've covered all of the compromised area. Paste as thin as possible. may notice I always work out to the edge, always. As I mentioned earlier, you don't want adhesive creeping underneath. Make sure the piece is long enough. If there's a rough or smooth side, some of this paper uh, is supposed to be made uniform. However, Occasionally, you will notice, just by feeling it, that there is a uh, rougher side. That rougher side has more tooth to it. If you think about the microscopic uh, view of this uh, paper surface, if one side is rougher, that's a greater surface area to have adhesive uh, on. And that's better than a smooth surface for obvious reasons. So, you would always use the rougher surface if there is one. 
uh, and that would be where the adhesive um, goes. There go. Now, because this is substantial engraving paper, thicker by far than the uh, text black paper, uh, the distortion is almost negligible, and that's typical of doing this to uh, frontispieces pieces or any engraving, any plate. Rule of thumb, plates and books. If they're pr true plates done typically engraved uh, on an engraving press, they're done as single leaves, almost always, sometimes uh, bifoliate, but usually done as single leaves and then introduced into the book at the very end uh, before the book, uh, the margins are trimmed in a guillotine. Uh, and the way they're introduced into the book is uh, by tipping in a tiny, hopefully very tiny, uh, minimalist bead of adhesive in the between the open pages, slipped in, close the pages, and it's stuck to an adjoining page. That's it. That's all that's holding, holding it in. When you're disbinding any book, you run across plates. If they're actual plates and not bound in, if they're independent leaves, uh, my standard is there's no way I'm putting a lot of work and effort and time into a book to restore the whole thing and leave plates just tipped in because that's going to then become the weak link in the chain. They are going to be the next thing that fail. The tiny little minimalist uh, bead of uh, old glue is going to fail. They're going to come out, start tattering the four edges. You've seen it a thousand times. As I'm restoring a, any book with any plate, the plate comes out, gets cleaned. I don't care if it's a family Bible with 300 plates in it. Uh, you have to take that into account before you start the job. Every plate needs to come out, clean off any old adhesive. Every plate gets guarded back into the adjoining signature. That's my standard. Uh, to do less, uh, I have a problem with doing anything less. Now, when it comes to realigning, again, use your top edge and your fore edge as your guide. Aesthetically, those are the two most important things. If this doesn't exactly line up, that's unfortunate, but aesthetically, that's not as important as top and fore edge. Hold everything in place. Do your fold like so. Make a note of what your overlap is and use your scrap paper accordingly. You want to come close. In other words, we wouldn't start pasting down here because that would leave a lot of exposed adhesive. So we want to come close to what our overlap is and it's getting smaller and smaller. That happens with this sort of thing. Will this fore edge, by the way, uh, you're, you may be thinking, will this, with all the extra mass at the spine end, won't that make the fore edge of the first signature creep out a bit? Yes, it will. Uh, it should be marginal. It shouldn't be that big a deal, but yes, you're right. Every time you add an extra piece of paper on this side, that pushes out, that makes the dimensions from the back to front slightly, marginally, no pun intended, marginally uh, greater than an untouched signature. Again, I should have, because I'm showing how to do this and how not to do it, I should have put scrap paper underneath it. I'll admit, because of time constraints, when I'm doing straightforward work like this, I cut corners, and I apologize. You are supposed to use scrap paper 
at all times to guard against little mishaps. So I was in error. Pretend I put paper under it. Time is of the essence. I cannot stress that enough. You've seen yourself just in this modest little demonstration. You've seen how quickly, almost instantly, paper fiber typically starts to distort with any introduction of any moisture, whatever. You minimize what you can and be as fast as you can and use heat and pressure, etc. Do your best. That's not bad. There is now an independent, independent in such, uh, in so far as it uh, opens flat, uh, a uh, an attached frontispiece in complete alignment. I'm a happy guy. Uh, with, again, we're we're minimizing the uh, distortion. Some distortion, inevitable, but. We're minimizing it. Best you can do. <coughs> Inscription. Client wants this, of course. Uh, this is one of the uh, the uh, values the client places on the item is the inscription, for obvious reasons. So, for aesthetic aesthetic reasons, again, this is more important than the verso, which is blank. So, the repair tissue goes on the verso. And since it is severely feathered, we will take that into account. There's no text or anything we need to worry about. This will be the last. I'll put the signature together after this is done. And this will conclude the demonstration on Reinforcement, tissue reinforcement, and guarding. Also, I've run out of strips of scrap paper. That feels rougher than this side, so rough side down. You need a good light source when you're pasting because besides sense of feel, your last method of judging the amount and coverage of your adhesive is the sheen you get off it. So you need a light source that will reflect. Uh, a sheen. If that's a low angle, uh, what do they call it? Um, raking. <coughs> a raking light, that's fine. If it needs to be directly overhead, do whatever you need with your light source so that as you're applying the adhesive, you are seeing exactly where adhesive is, where it isn't, and how much there is of it. That is almost that. So make sure this isn't upside down or anything. It's exactly where you want it to go. Align the top and the fore edge like so. Make sure everything is aligned. Now, here we're getting down to the nub. We're getting this is almost too little surface, but it'll be fine. It'll be sufficient. One of the uh, things about guarding, as opposed to tipping or anything else, there is going to be actually no real tension put on this surface. As long as it's glued down the only tension is going to be in the flexing of the fiber at the very um, 
point of the fold. So all of this is not going to get stressed over the years with use. So a tiny area like this, that's good enough. And yes, I will remember to put scrap paper underneath and align this with just a little bit. If you've noticed, my thumbs never, at least one part of my hand, never leaves the overall assembly because it would take one split second for things to get jostled. You don't notice it. You adhere this down and then you got a problem because suddenly everything's out of alignment. So this becomes second nature. As you're working with an assembly, if it needs to stay in place, uh, it, very quickly you develop a, a just a subconscious uh, thing about keeping pressure on the assembly as you do other stuff. Almost done. Always stroke out to the edge, never the other way around. So this is a little tricky because you're dealing with so little. Actually, here's a little trick that makes life a bit easier. Like so. And heat and pressure. And that is how you guard. Quick and easy. Once you do it a hundred times or so, don't worry about it. Now, there's our first signature, all but the inner pages. It's real important you go to the right, <coughs> <coughs> the right uh, area. Here we have the first page and page 15. Well, actually, the first page is on the verso. Uh, here we have, so this is page 2, here's page 3, page 14, we know we're in business, like so. You can see just a tiny bit of the inner section showing, the top margin is aligned, but yes, technically there is a tiny bit exposed, which means everything else, the shell we've just created, is has shrunk a tiny bit, but it's marginal. What is that? Um, maybe a 50th of an inch, maybe less. Uh, I wouldn't worry about it. Aesthetically, it's not going to be a, an issue. Four edge, not bad. Four edge is okay. So, and I think just on the safe side, we're going to press everything down. It's all in place. There is our first signature. It will get sewn through the middle as any other signature. It's just got a lot of addenda, a lot of uh, ephemeral stuff that's now permanently attached. Every page will be able to open flat without undue stress on the structure. That's important. And aesthetically, pretty close to the original. Done.